Hi, my name is Keith Cooper, Northlight Images, and in this short video I'm going to look at optimal print settings for detail for the Canon Pro 200. Now I've carried out similar tests for the Epson P700, P900 and the Canon Pro 300. So I thought since I'd still got it here, I'd run some prints off and test for the best detail settings for the uh, 200. Now the 200 is a dye based printer, the other ones I've tested have been pigment based. Makes very little difference for this because I'm printing on a luster paper here. Uh, what I'm really looking at is that there's um, there's perceived wisdom you get on forums and like sometimes that there are magic resolutions that work better for printing and if you resize your image to these particular resolutions then you'll get better results. In particular for Canon printers it's 300 pixels per inch. Pixels per inch, not the same as dots per inch. Dots per inch is how many dots of ink are sprayed over and there's many more dots than there are pixels because you need several dots of ink to make a different each color because there's a limited range of inks there are. Um, so that's why the two are different there. But this is pixels per inch is resolution. Now, what I've tested, I say uh, there's an article that goes with this video as well. Do have a look at that because that's got the pictures in much more detail. You can uh, click on them, zoom in on them and see the detail. And most importantly, decide whether any of this actually matters. Because remember, I'm looking at tiny detail on a photograph. Now, this is a print of the uh, test image. Um, this is probably only about 240 uh, pixels per inch. I just printed it out when I was testing the paper. Um, I've actually resized the image. And the original image was taken with a 50 megapixel camera, a Canon 5DS, and there is masses of detail in the image. Enough that I can comfortably print at A2. Now I'm printing smaller here so that I can fit images onto a single sheet of paper, uh, not waste too much paper, and just test for detail. Here's the image. This gives you a relative idea of the sampling. So I've sampled the image down to, there's a version at 1200 pixels per inch, massive, huge, great amount of resolution, far more than you'd normally use, right down to 300, which is the supposedly optimum number. Um, I've also got 600 to see whether sending more resolution to the printer makes any difference. And I've picked at 460, purely arbitrary because it's between 300 and 600. And if 300 is one quality of image and 600 is better, I want to see whether 460 is a bit better than 360, but not as good as 600, or whether there's just a simple step in the process. So I've got these images, I've printed them out here. Um, I've got loads of them you know, at different sizes. Now, I have to photograph these. Uh, my scanner simply isn't, the uh, oldest scanner I've got, flatbed scanner, simply isn't high enough resolution to be able to show the individual ink droplets. So I'm using a macro lens and a 50 megapixel camera. And even then I'm only just seeing the dots clearly on the images. So there are you know, some aspects of, you might say, well, if, it, if you need to go to that much effort to show the dots, does it really make much difference? Yes and no, but I'll, I'll come back to that. Now the 200 itself, uh, much like the 300 I tested, only has two quality settings. This is the Mac driver. I'm printing for Photoshop here. Um, reason for that is that partly because I'd resized the images in Photoshop and they're Photoshop PSD files. So I'm just happened to be printing them. Doesn't matter. This applies to JPEGs, it applies to anything using the driver. Now I'm using the Mac driver here and there are only two settings. There is high and standard. Uh, there are no other adjustments available on it. Uh, there is custom where you can change a few bits and pieces, but essentially there are only two settings, standard against highest. Now, here's an image where I've printed it. Uh, the print is at 300 pixels per inch, and I've printed it here. So we've got two versions of it. I've just run the paper through twice, and I've got one at standard and one at high. Now, if I look at the standard image, and here we've got uh, the actual pixels, you can see, uh, sorry, the dots of ink, I should say. 
um, of this image. And do bear in mind that this brown cow here is on this print here, um, not much larger than a full stop would be in uh, written text. It really is small. It's less, less than, well under a millimeter across. And it's, it's tiny in this, it's pretty small in this, and it's not very big even in an A2 sized print. There is a lot of detail in this print, and that's what I'm looking at here. So there we go, there's the standard, and there is the high quality setting. There's not a lot of difference, and I'm going to be fairly certain that on the video, um, any difference you're going to see are going to be lost uh, once the video has been recorded, edited, once YouTube have compressed it and the various things like that, you'll almost certainly see very little difference with this. I'll inset the images um, to so you can have a look, but if you want to see the actual detail, have a look at the written article that's linked from the text underneath this video in the description. But anyway, there we have to, I'll just go back to standard detail and to high detail. There's not a lot of difference in it. It does show you how big the ink droplets are. Now, here's the actual print. Can I see any difference? Well, these are my reading glasses and uh, my eyesight is such that I need glasses for anything closer than arm's length. And for detailed stuff like this, I'd actually need extra strong glasses, stronger than these, so I can look at detail like that. Mind you, I've always thought that anyone who looks at a print at this distance that doesn't need to do so because of visual um, aspects is never going to buy a print. Only other photographers look at prints like that. Um, and to my mind, it's completely the wrong way to look at a print. Fine if you're looking to see if there are problems with the printer or something like that. But as a way of looking at print quality, um, completely the wrong way round. Uh, I want to look at that print at about that distance, similarly for the larger one. For the A2 one, I'm, I'm, it's, a, it's a larger version still, but you know, we're just looking at the theoretical aspects in some ways here, not how you go about pictures. Uh, how you go about pictures just puts some of these results in a little bit of context, perhaps. So, you know, that's 300, not much difference in it. What happens if I go from, and this is the high detail one, if I go to 600, well, there is visibly more detail in the picture. Uh, if you have a look at the uh, ones on the website, you'll be able to see it more clearly, but there are some uh, fence posts against these dry stone walls that are clearly visible in the 600 version. If I go back to the 300, there is a hint that they're there, but there's no detail. You can see that this gate post here, for example, is much clearer at 600. Well, I tried this for, I'm not gonna go through all of, all of these um, and just show you almost invisible differences. But suffice to say, if you want the maximum detail, fine detail in your prints, send 600 pixels per inch to the printer. There is an improvement to be gained at 460 over 300. And that says to me that what I should do, if I have an image that when I've edited it comes out at let's say 410 pixels per inch, rather than do any resizing or anything like that. Now, I'm not talking about image sharpening or any other aspects of editing. This is just purely in the detail. Sending 410 pixels per inch will print more detail than if I reduced it to 300 and sprinted that. Now, seems relatively obvious. But a lot of the comments that you see are people saying, well, then maybe there are special values that you should send of pixels per inch that work better, are based probably on printer drivers 15 to 20 years ago, uh, when there was not the capability of the computers and the printers uh, to be able to do the amount of calculations to handle those fractional increases in pixel in resolutions. So now it's no problem at all. So that old thing about 300 pixels per inch for Canon, 360 for uh, Epson is exactly that, old and probably out of date. Now, I would say if you don't believe these, test them yourself. 
If anybody tells you stuff like this and it's backed up by common wisdom and experience, test it yourself. Um, it was a long-standing belief that the popular things we see, and these include stuff like sharpening, which I will be addressing in future videos when I have a, a big printer here to look at, that that was reasonable advice 15, 20 years ago, but not now. So send all your resolution. Now, a few other little aspects of this that might be of interest. When I looked at the three, the standard versus high setting, I can see quite a difference and I can almost see it with just my reading glasses at this distance. The standard resolution looks slightly more grainy. That's fairly obvious in the, in the pictures. And there are two reasons for that. One, and I, when I, I found this when I did some initial test prints, was that the printer needed its head aligning again. Now, you align the heads on printers like the Canon Pro 300, 200, when you set them up, because the heads are installed when you set up the printer. That's fine, you run the setup, you run the alignment, that's okay. However, Things like this, over the course of a few months, particularly with a new printer, they may bed in slightly, there may be slight adjustments, slight movements, and it takes a tiniest movement to throw things out. So, after you've had a printer, like a 200, 300, for six months to a year, depending on how much you use it, uh, or if you move it roughly, so if you put it in the back of a car and transport it somewhere, run the print head alignment. It makes a tiny difference on the standard setting. On the high setting, it didn't make much difference. Suggests it's a close run thing as to what it is, but suffice to say, if I'm printing on the Canon Pro 200, I will always use the highest setting unless I'm in a hurry. It's the real, what it, what it does, what's the difference between high setting and the standard setting? Um, the high setting and I don't know the precise details of this, but the high setting effectively slows everything down to allow more accurate placement of ink dots. So there's no big difference between the high and the standard setting other than the, the high setting is slower and by running slower, it actually allows a more even, more precise dot pitch um, of, of putting these little ink droplets on the paper. Um, and it's a visible difference here on the 200. Much less so on the 300. Um, I would still choose the high setting on the 300. Um, that, this is for luster papers. This is quite a nice luster paper. I use. Now, this is a 300 gram luster paper. Um, actually, I used it because it's dead flat and it makes it easier for me to take these photos than the Canon luster I'd used before, which has got a slight curl on it, uh, which just, you know, these are zoomed in so much, these pictures is a slight problem with, uh, with getting accurate focus on it. And if, if you know that, then you can see some of the issues I've had in some of the previous images that I've used for this when I've done things. So we've got align your printer, use the highest setting, and send more data to the printer. Anything above 600 doesn't seem to really make much difference. I don't think it causes any harm, but it's obviously a lot of data. You don't need to do it. There's nothing probably wrong with doing it. Um, if I had an image that was a native resolution of say 1500 pixels per square inch and I wanted to print it, um, I'd probably downsize it to 1600 just to make things go a bit quicker and, and a bit easier like that. Um, I'll just finish off with a quick note on the 200 versus the 300, since I've tested both Canon Pro 200 and 300 in this. They seem to have the same um, acceptance of higher resolution. So both of them send whatever resolution you've got above 300 and it's great, it'll show better. But there is less difference between the high quality mode and the standard quality mode in the, on the 300. Um, some aspects of Pro 300 printing are better than the 200, some are better on the 200. Um, particularly if I want very glossy prints, I'll still likely pick um, the 200 because the gloss inks can give you a bit more oomph for very glossy metallic type prints. But anyway, I've, I've got a video 
Pro 200 versus 300, what differences are and what they might, what differences they might make to you. In looking at the prints here and the photos of the 300, there is very little difference on this paper here with this image. But this image is hardly challenging in terms of gamut and things. This is intended for detail and this is what this is about. It's a detail test. So there you have it. I'll be doing tests like this on other printers as well uh, when I get them, uh, when I've got them here. Um, and we'll do stuff. If you've got any questions, please do ask, but have a look at the written article because my written articles always have far more detail than these videos and it's where you should always go. Because as I pointed out to somebody the other day, if I discover a slight mistake I've made in a video, that's it. It's cast in stone. I'm not going to go back and re-record the video. Uh, whereas with an article, if I've got a slight mistake in it, I can go back and correct it or update it and things like that. So do remember the written articles always take precedence over the videos if you're unsure of anything. It's because I've got the chance to update and correct them, which I haven't got with this. Anyway, I hope that's been of use. Um, I will be doing more stuff on this, probably when I next get a large printer here, so I can actually look at things like, what about if your images are at lower resolution? How, what about resizing? sharpening, things like smart resizing, things like Gigapixel AI, uh, Sharpen AI, all the new kinds of software that simply weren't around 15 years ago when you were looking at what you could get away with printing. But anyway, hope that's been of some interest. Please do subscribe to the channel if you find it of use and uh, thank you for watching.